Jesus is my GPS. Anybody、um, ever lived in the era where GPS did not exist? <laughs> yes. Let me turn off some of this.、Um, Uh, it was a, it was a tough tough time when GPS、um, you know not invented yet.、Uh, I I'm not I have a 2.0 independence in terms of my passion, so I don't like asking directions. Okay, I I just feel like the safest way for me is to keep trying, keep trying until I hit the target. Anybody been there with somebody like okay, Paul? Okay, so no matter how your wife's wife telling you not here again, you will keep saying, "Let me try one more time," <laughs> and you have a GPS voice right now. But it used to be Shawei's voice. Can we just stop? Ask somebody. Okay, <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is my GPS.、Um, <laughs> So、um, and I love to go to places according to my old memory. Have you been in life like that? Like you know, if you don't have a GPS, you just do, just go with the instinct you have. This is how my mom did it. This is how my grandma cook it. Now it's not <laughs> okay. Okay, folks, you have a GPS today, and uh, so uh, I hope you are not a day like this, and you have to make the last turn. Are you alive in your 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 direction and your decisions like this? You do this. You make decision based on your old experience in the past, instead of you have a fresh turn by turn direction from actually three four satellite who do the phase differentiation. It's a phase array antenna thing. I work at GE. Some sort of work with a little bit on GPS technology. It's a wonderful invention that just can be triangular where you are from the satellites. And you got four or five satellites above you. You don't see. Actually, they see you and they see where you are from your GPS. They can pinpoint you within about half meter where you are, and they know the map. They see it. How about that? That's what GPS is. So it's God's positioning system. Turn, turn your neighbor and say God's positioning system, and focus on positioning. Just say to your neighbor, positioning. Just say that positioning.、Oh, well, you look like lost to me, but you know what? A lot of people, if they know where they are, where they want to go, we are able to really, really, why be wise? A, a sense of direction. Is so important in our life, isn't it? What to do? When to retire? Which stock to invest? Should I up out from stock market, go into the real estate as everybody else is doing? The sense of direction and which school I'm going, which major, which which subject my kids are going to study. All this a sense of direction in the ministry. The same way is God leading us into this place. Should we stay here for longer? We own in the sense of positioning. Hallelujah! So I want to share with you. Jesus is my God's positioning system. Hallelujah! Do you need a position where you are right now? Anybody? You want to know where you are right now? Raise your hand online too. You want to know where you are, where you are heading? Yeah,、uh, or you already know. God bless you, but. Nine out of ten people really don't know where they are going. I'm hundred percent sure. Sometimes, including some politicians, they don't know where they are going. And I work in corporate America.、Uh, a lot of leaders in the leadership position,、uh, they don't know where where they are going. They just go with the flow. We are not Christians. We are not just going with the flow. Amen. We are not drift woods. We have a sense of direction. So God is your. Well, I would say Jesus is God's positioning system for me. I take one step further. God has a positioning system, but for you, we can only know it through Jesus' voice. So, are you in this kind of situation? You are being led by someone. <laughs> no GPS. Arriving in forty years, I can't be dry. <laughs> okay. Have 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 you received the promise of God from the Bible and never never come to come to fruition? This message is for you, and maybe you're on the right hand side. 
recalculating, recalculating. I, that's why I had the first GPS about 10 years ago. It was not a good GPS. So when we went to uh, New York City, and because of the narrow, the, the high rises, so in New York City, it keep recalculating. It, it's so annoying because every turn, when I make the wrong turn, it will get a very robotic voice say, recalculating. <laughs> I just shout at the machine say, are you done yet? <laughs> and I t make another wrong turn and the machine said, recalculating. It's too slow. It's too slow, way too slow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let me turn this down a little bit. Um, so I know this is something I want you to really say, are you recalculating? Throughout pandemic, have you been recalculating? Calculate, I don't know what you are calculating in. Do you have an internal compass or a voice? Keep saying, recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. And the, the day when I arrived in the United States of America, I landed in Boston for a conference. When I got off the airport, I never have a sense of freedom and liberty. I don't know why. Maybe that's a spiritual atmosphere. I have no idea. But I step out, the Boston airport was not a beautiful airport. Sorry, Boston people. Your airport, uh, you know, needs some work. But I step out and I really feel there's a sense of mm, very different from where I grew up in Taiwan. So, and, and to me, when I end up in this nation, I do a lot of recalculating. But one thing I know, <laughs> when God, or G through Jesus, leading me to stay here, I have one decision I made, like, I'm going to be in this nation, on this land, and this will be a place I'm going to minister, I'm going to raise up my family. Have you ever made that decision? Or your inner voice is always recalculating, oh, if China becomes the next power, I'm going to move to China. Or you have other things recalculating, recalculating, oh, maybe. But, but, you know, we at a certain point have to say, this is my land. This is where I belong. Amen? The Bible also, although say we are the traveler, but Bible says very clearly how God put into a one place. One place in the Old Testament, Abraham actually built what? Altar there. That means his mind is settling down for there to serve that land. To be a steward for that land. So we have to get rid of the mindset. If you and I are an immigrant, like I'm coming here, take the most of the land, and let's move on if the land is not working for me. We have to repent from that. Whew. We have to repent from that recalculating mindset. Amen? Oh, I, 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 I know this is not very popular quote, preaching, but I, I, this is very biblical. We have to build an altar from where we are. If you are in a company the same way, you cannot just go in the company the first day you are recalculating what you want to get, how you want to get out. That's not going to work. If you end up on the campus, your first thought is, I'm recalculating what I need to get out of this campus, I'm going to go. We have to repent from this kind of immigrant uh, mindset because you know what? God put in the land to bless our land. Amen? We are turning out to be the blessing to the land. If you are with me on this one, I have to go through the recalculating, recalculating mindset and say, Lord, I'm a traveler, yes, but this is a place I'm going to raise my family. So I want to be a blessing to this land. Amen? Amen. Just say that with me. I choose to become a blessing to this land. Just say that with me. If that's what you are, you are really from the bottom of your heart, just say that with me. I choose to become a blessing to this land. Amen? Hallelujah. So, um, so we need God's position system. Not, I'm not saying you shouldn't retire anywhere else. But, but I want to share with you, God's guidance is through Jesus. So um, God always leads. That's who He is. He's never just in the counseling business. God, God's not in the counseling business. He goes to say, God, how about this? If you're some of the other gods, they are in the counseling business. So you go to the temple, you pick up something, and you just do, go through the process, and then you can ask God what direction. Who should I marry? Which day my wedding is supposed to be? Shall I go here? You know, you know, God's never in the counseling business. He's not a counselor. Holy Spirit is, but He's not. He's not. He leads. He always leads. He knows where you are. 
He's leading. If you are a leader, he's a, he leads. So if you tell me God doesn't know what the United States of America is going through, he knows. Heavenly Father, he knows. He leads. But the next sentence is, he leads us to where we're supposed to be. Turn to your neighbor and say, supposed to be. Just say that. Supposed to be. One more time. Supposed to be. You and I have a place God knows we're supposed to be right now. And, and, and I hope later on you, will, you and I will say amen to this. But not where we want to be. God knows where we're supposed to be. So I'm going to share with you a story to just give you three things. How we can really work with Jesus so that God is becoming our global positioning system. We so much need this. If today's modern wisdom or modern thing needs something, it's about a sense of direction. Amen? Because if you go on Google, go on Yahoo, you do anything, it will give you tons of knowledge. And some of you, when you have some kind of medical situation, you Google it, you went through all the medical records, you go through the, even the published papers. I admire that. That does satisfy your intellectual acquire, inquiring of this. But you know, at a certain point, you have to drop from that. You have to drop out from that kind of knowledge piling up. Because the knowledge in the Bible says actually kills. <laughs> knowledge sometimes brings fears because those knowledge is cold. It's just knowledge. But at a certain point, we have to make decision. Have a sense of uh, direction. That's called wisdom. So, so where to turn? That's so important. So I pray God will help us to build that wisdom today. So um, Deuteronomy 8.2, let me read that to you. You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years. And look at those pictures, you know, 40 years, redirecting, you know, recalculating. I pray right now you and I will get over that wilderness in your and my spiritual life. We have to get over it. We have to say, Lord, I'm not recalculating. This is my land. I want you to lead me into everywhere I go. Well, be promised land. Amen. Every step I, 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 I can I shall become a blessing to people. That's my mindset has been. No matter what company I work for, I say, Lord, let me be a blessing to that company. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We are not consumers. We are not consumers. Amen. We are givers. We are the one who, are, we are, we are, we are the one who bless other people. Hallelujah. And, and you see, that he might humble you. So if God is not leading you, if you are see, feeling you are circling around things, he's, he, he might be humbling you, testing you to know that what was in your heart. If you want to, and I want to work with God's position assistance through Jesus, the first thing is we have to humble ourselves. Now, have you ever been in a situation you don't, don't want to listen to GPS? Paul. Yeah, you say, no, GPS, shut up. I know this way, right? So, uh, and, 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 and we, we, we sometimes, <laughs> we have to listen. We have to humble. We have to say, well, God, you see everything. You see above all. I trust in you. But that's so difficult because God, Father God is like, oh. But through Jesus, we are able to be humble and gentle and nimble so we are able to be led by the Holy Spirit, by God. A lot of us come to me and say, Pastor, should I do this? Should I do that? I will give you my advice. But you know what? We all need to have a sense of direction, the communication through Jesus, so that we know God's voice through Jesus, whether you would keep his commandment or not. Hallelujah. So, uh, for example, Sunday, to gather together, um, is a commandment. I'm not saying Sunday. I'm saying one day a week is a minimum requirement for us to keep a sound mind. So I have a theory. If a person take a rest every seven days, it's actually it's very good for that person's well-being. So we have college kids. They go to campus. Then stop this, this regularity. They stop this routine. They come to church in the family setting. Sit down, listen to the word of God, worship, and then eat together. When they stop this routine, their well-being starts to suffer. And that's not simple. So sometimes God is not complicated. God has a position and system for us. So once every seven days or ten days, that frequency is what God created you and me to take a rest. That's his commandment. 
It's more than just come to church as a rule, as a regulation. But this is what we need. We need to pass this on to our next generation. They have to get up on Sunday. They have to start to come and get our routine back. Amen? Amen. Otherwise, how can we be responsible for their well-being? We can. Only God can. Amen? But we have to come back and say, why am I circling the wilderness for 40 years? Because God's testing our heart. Are we keeping His commandment or not? So I pray, young people, all your children, my children, I know, you know, Zach, if he has options, he might not come here on Sunday. But we're not forcing him. But Zach, when you come on Sunday, it's like, yeah, yes, okay, right? It's not like, ah, I'm coming, but it's like, okay. So we have to do a little bit of nudging them and say, hey, come, come. Just bring them up. Bring them to church. Uh, or they wake up and stay in front of the screen. Because to me, this is for your and my own good. Amen? I have a theory. If we have rest, and with this kind of family rest every seven days or so, oh my, we'll have a constant stability. Hallelujah. Praise God. So my sheep hear my voices. So how God leads us through His uh, global positioning system. I'm so excited, you know, because I don't see the whole picture. I don't see what Zach going to face down the road. No, I don't. I don't know what kind of wife he's going to marry. I don't even know what kind of pet he's going to have. But God knows. So we have to <laughs> prepare generations that we are, we are in a position to receive God's correction, God's leading, and God's voice through Jesus. That's John 10, 27, through Jesus' voice. So I come to give you three things through Jesus' voice that you and I can really walk into, have this proclaim, uh, uh, we can proclaim that, Jesus, you are my God's position, positioning system. You are through your voice. So his position system works through Jesus' voice. We have to know that voice very well. So I have three things I want to share with you. You can take notes, and you can work on this. It's going to be a story from John, John 9, John chapter, Gospel of John chapter 9. It's about the healing um, around the pool. Um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, um, story. Um, I want to share that with you, John 9. Um, in John 9, 1, it starts with the story. As he went along, Jesus, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciple asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The first thing coming to God's position system through Jesus' voice. Now, let me be very, very careful here. There are a lot of people, they want to know God's voice. Uh, I have to be very clear with this. For us, washed by the precious blood of Jesus, the first thing when we want to come to know God's perfect will is through Jesus' voice. Amen? And He speaks to us through Holy Spirit. So, and this, this man was born blind, and disciples, it's like a Christian just ask, Jesus, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? And, and under the context of today, in this nation, I have seen different places start to question about the founding father of this nation. Is the nation this way? Because of forefather, founding father? This question is a generational question. It may be asked towards nation. It could be asked toward you. And 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 I have seen husband and wife in argument, it will end up like this. That's because your family always does this. Have you ever in an argument like that? Yeah. It's because Hakanese, this particular type of Chinese tribe, is very, very stingy. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> Oh, it's because you are Cantonese. That's why you eat so much. You start to label people. You start to divide people. You start to cut and, you know, slice and say, because, so you start to see your parent, your generation, your family, your tribe. You know, this is, this is a generational question. And this is being asked here about this born blind man. 
And this is really at catch 22 or 21. <laughs> no matter how Jesus answered, it's a wrong answer. If Jesus could answer, oh, because his parents sinned, well, it's a wrong answer. Okay. Or because he sinned. It's, it's just, it's just they, this, this is the trap. Have you been in the trap in where you want to gain wisdom? You want to gain direction from God. You have to trap from your parent, your generational statement. Some of you come to me, you, you don't know when you talk, Holy Spirit in me. Sometimes I start to discern, it's not you talking, it's actually your mom talking. Oh, you say, oh, that's scary. No, no, no. When I say your mom talking, that means your mom's attitude is talking through you. Have you ever been in that situation? When I talk to a man, sometimes I see the, the man's dad's talking. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I look at myself when Zach was young, when I disciplined Zach, when I look at, I just have replayed my mind, say, I say I wouldn't be doing this when I'm a dad and a parent because I don't do that from my parents. I end up doing it. Anybody been there? I just say the same thing, the same tone. In the wilderness for 40 years, it has to stop. And, and Jesus was put in a situation, who's in? In this nation, who's in? Our founding father was called slave owners. They were. But in this world, every, in the history, every nation, every tribe, slave systems have been there for thousands of years. At that time, I, I'm not trying to say we should have slave system, but put that in the context. Slaves, if in the Roman Empire, slaves actually got certain social status compared to other social status they are make living, making a living. So we have to be very careful just put people, today's modern language, to the old time. Hallelujah. You know how Jesus answered this? Jesus is my God's possibility system. Turn to your neighbor and say, Poss possibility. Jesus turned this away from who sinned against what, who really didn't do this, who's supposed to do that. If you are in that kind of wilderness, get out of it. Jesus get out by providing God's possibility system to this blind man. He is not called by the past. He's not called by the argument. He said, anything with God is possible. Amen? Whether your parents sin or this man sin, yes, but anything through God is possible. And I'm here to help you to go through the system. Hallelujah. And if you hear voices that condemn me, that comes from judgmental thing. We have to go through Jesus first and say, Jesus, what would you say about this? Jesus would call, will return this and say, anything is possible with God. You know, when Jesus was in Mary's womb, his mother's womb, and that's what the angels say to Mary, and Mary say, anything is possible with God. So Jesus, as a baby in his mother's womb, you know, he already started to say out of the spirit and through his mom and say, anything is possible with God. And Jesus countered everything seemed to be in the trap, seemed to be in the wilderness, seemed to be things that never kind of you can get over from your family line. Jesus said, with me, through me, I will show you God's possibility system. Hallelujah. It is possible with God. There's nothing impossible with God. Amen? If you are saying impossible, 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 if you go through that who I am, I am, so impossible become I am possible. Amen? Through the one who say, I am who I am. Impossible become I am possible. And that's such a, such a, such an important thing. That as we people get into the wilderness argument, people get into this kind of past history argument, and you are not easy to get into it. Yes, we should dig into it, we learn from it, but at that point, that's knowledge. Knowledge kills. But the wisdom, that's where Jesus is speaking to you, is reviving, is resurrecting. Anything is possible. You know what Jesus said? Verse 3. Neither this man or, nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. He's becoming unassuming. His parents might have sinned. I don't know. He might have sinned. But Jesus said, let's take a step back. 
I'll show you a new system, a brand new system called everything in God is possible. But this happened so that the works of God might be displaying Him. You see, He's talking on a total different level. He's saying from God's view, through what I'm going to speak to you, this man's situation, born blind, is going to show, display the works of God. Later on, he continued to say, as long as it's, it, it, it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night's coming when no one can work. It's what Jesus said, what, while I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. And you can see Jesus start to light up. Jesus, Jesus just through his word to give you a, a how should I call this, a, a sense of hope, sense of possibility, amen? Anything today through media, even through church pulpit, if he preach condemnation, he preach something that never change, we have to clean this out from our system, amen? We have to come back and say, anything with God through Jesus is possible, amen? Even though this nation may have something, we have to fix it. But anything is possible with God. Hallelujah. Through Jesus. That's why Jesus is speaking to me. Speaking to me into the God's possibility system. Amen? Let's never get into who sin. Who, yeah, we, we, we will learn about it from the healing team. We'll go through it. But mostly, I, I hear from the healing team, give me feedback right now. The Restoration Foundation. The most important thing is not the knowledge of the Bible. A lot of people came in full of Bible knowledge about sin, about curse, about all this you know, punishment. But they could not live it out. They are still in bondage. But only when Holy Spirit, throughout the ministry team, start to speak in God's possibility for that person's life, that person start to change. Amen? Hallelujah. So, and then the next thing, you would be surprised. God, Jesus showed it. I, I don't know how this Jesus did this. If he did, could have done this be, to some of you here with high order. I don't think you would like it. Do you know why? <laughs> because he actually, <laughs> he actually spit into the mud. <laughs> Mixed his saliva with the mud and put on the blind man's eye socket. I, I, all right, so here, if, if you are the blind man's family or you are the blind man himself, would you receive that kind of? You can't see him anyway. So. I know. <laughs> Joyce is totally right. <laughs> A lot of us, we do not receive God's direction and blessing because we think we see. I still have a bit of a 5% eyesight. Don't put that on me, Jesus. <laughs> so sometimes we have to really, to a point, we are 100% blind. And whatever God's going to do on me, through Jesus, let it be. Saliva and mud. This blind man didn't even know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oftentimes we have to come to a point that we have to say, Lord, I'm totally, totally, totally blind. Do whatever you have to do. Sometimes if let something just, mm, your argument, your and my, whatever, let's quiet down until Jesus starts to do that. This is God's possibility system. Mud and saliva equals therapy. Actually, a lot of people say when, when the man was born blind, usually maybe they don't even eyeball in the socket. So Jesus has to perform a creative miracle, create something totally new. Have you ever seen people were born uh, blind? They're, sometimes physical feature of the eye didn't really grow, don't have a socket and stuff. Jesus doing a creative miracle. He is your God's possibility system. John 9, go tell him. <laughs> and this one is very interesting to what? Watch in the pool. Huh. Well, so it's not instantaneous healing, so that's not a miracle. This one is definitely a, um, how should I say, a step of faith, a journey of faith. Wash in the pool of Siloam. The word means sent in the Old Testament from the book of Isaiah. Who, who shall I send? Who can I send? That word is the same way, Siloam, Siloam, okay? So basically, 
God, through this, through Jesus is saying, I'm sending you out. If you want God's possibility with you, it cannot be just for you and me alone. It's going to be a message for you. If you need a miracle, you need something like this, God's possibility this system, we have to come and repent. As I just said, Lord, let me be a blessing to many. Through me, I want to be that vessel for you. You can see this blind man show that. He was called to a place called Sent. So you sent out. So if you have that heart for the kingdom, and God is going to bless you with stuff, with things that you would never imagine because you are being called to send out in this world. And the man went and washed and came on seeing. Hallelujah. So the first, second part, God, Jesus is my God position system. The second key word is God's power system. Turn your neighbor and say power. power. One more time, power. power. And, and I don't know what this man did, but the power doesn't come from instantaneous healing. Actually, the man has to pick up his own feet and walk to uh, the pool of Ceylon and wash according to what Jesus said to him. So God's power is not the overpowering type of power. God's power is not the kind of manip manipulating type of power. God's power works with you. And you and I have to really surrender our free will and say, Lord, let your power work in me. Yet, I'm taking every step today. Starting from this evening, I'm going to take one small step. You can see his power is gradual. His power is something on every on daily basis. If you want to overcome some well-being situation, you want to overcome some psychological uh, short, shortage of that shortage, the shortcoming, like you say, oh, I feel I'm depressed. You, have, you and I have to pick up a step today. Start walking to the poor salon and say, once I get there, I will be totally free. Yet today, I have my part. Lord, work with me. So his power is, I call it, is, is we yoke with him through his power. That's Jesus' power. Jesus' power. God's power is almighty, omnipotent. But when Jesus is giving through Jesus, Jesus' power is we yoke with him. Every day, every day, starting from today, that you and I make our decision and say, I'm going to yoke with Jesus. His yoke is light. I'm going to go this way. So, so, so um, um, God bless you with that. The second one, Jesus is my God's power system. And Jesus' power, I wouldn't say it's different from God's power, but God's power is only potent. When you see it, it just fall on the floor. Those are the great things. But there's another level of power which is not that overwhelming. It's something that you and I pick our feet, set the direction, even though I have mud, saliva. Saliva on my head. I look shameful. I'm not there yet. But no matter what, Jesus' voice say, go there. I sent. I sent you. 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 You may say, I'm just a housewife. I sent you. Just go. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just nobody. I sent you. I sent you. I sent you. And, and, and you see, every step when you walk up, if you study the, 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 the pathway from the pool of Siloam, you can still go to Jerusalem to find it. You actually have to go through the marketplace. You have to go a little bit upward and, and then downward. So it, a lot of people will see him. Ask God's power with you. Are you there yet? Have you picked up your feet and say, I'm sent, but I don't know where, but I'm walking every step. I'm preparing myself. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm, 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 my, my, my sense of direction is there. God use me. And you say, Coach K, Pastor, where should I retire? This church, we never retire. Amen. We reach dash tire. Amen. We put the tire on and we do something. So we, you should start praying, God, when I really face out this season of my career, where are you going to send me? I'm going to serve you. Starting from now, a lot of people say, oh, let me get over this busy work. And then I start thinking about kingdom of God. Too late. Start from now. Even we are serving. I work full time in corporate America. Through those years, I want to have a testimony with you. I start thinking about serving the Lord. That's why my Sunday, I, I, I just say Sunday is the Lord's day. If I don't serve the Lord in the church, we go to the restaurant, sit down. I serve my family. 
And you say, well, you and I start walking toward the pool called Salon Sand. God going to send you out. Because that's the only way through Jesus we can start to experience God's complete healing power, restoration power in us. That's the second thing. Number three. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Woo! Wow, his neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging ask, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claim that he was. And, and you can see like it stirred up a lot of talk, a lot of thing. High excitement people may not really take it. So, uh, you know, if you're a PQ coach, you should say, is this blind man high accept and low accept? You can read it. Okay, very interesting. Uh, that's a test for you. Um, is this blind man high accept and low acceptance? I can give you the answer. He's low acceptance. So God, Jesus, you, he's, God, Jesus used him to in a very high acceptance cloud and say, why? Why are you asking me this question? And the, the, the Pharisees said he must be the demon because he healed in the Sabbath, the day of Sabbath, that's supposed to rest. And this man just said, I don't know, but demon doesn't heal. He must be from God. <laughs> you know, he's like, just said directly how he thinks. Praise God. Hallelujah. 24, a second time they summoned the man, you know, who has been blind, now healed. Give glory to God by telling the truth. They said, we know this man is a sinner. Oh, wow. Hmm. Wow. At that moment, this learned religious people, elite of the society, they claim they know everything. These are the priests, Pharisees who dedicate their life to study. Don't just call this Jewish people. Today's American society, there are so many elite claim they know. They have studied for years. They know better than us. They call Jesus a sinner. Mm. Wow. Whew. Where, are we, where are we? The history just repeats itself. It's not. It's really it's about we as an individual. We sin. We are sinners. And the blind man replied, whether he's a sinner or not, this is low acceptance. I don't know. I don't care. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. I have to be very honest with you. Many Christians, we can say, I was blind. But the second part is difficult. But now I see. This is, I'm going to lead to the third part of this. Jesus is my God's peace system. A lot of people, Christians start to see things. But it doesn't bring that Christian peace. Yes, God has ultimate vengeance about injustice. I understand. But through Jesus, his name, part of his name is called Prince of Peace. So if you want to follow God, the first thing we need to follow is Jesus' peace voice. Let me just make sure that you hear me right. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So verse 13, they brought to the Pharisees a man who had been blind. Now, the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. You see that? This one, I can, I can go on with this. Many, many, we can refer to Genesis, how God created Adam through mud. And all that, we can go a lot of sermons on this. But I want you to focus on the day it's Sabbath. It's a day of peace, day of rest. And Jesus chose that day to heal this man. For a reason to show he is the Lord of the peace. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. And the religious people miss it. Now today, I have to refer to the national situation here. Some of you and I have to be very careful. What is being made right now is a new religion. Some of the things that are being displayed out there through media and all that, 
they are coming up new religion. It's not me. You can talk. A lot of people start to sense it. Not just me. People start to start saying, "This is a religion. This is not politics anymore." They have their God. They have their sense. You know, they need to be there. We have to be very careful about that. But you know who is ultimately the Lord, the Master of Peace? It is Jesus. That's His name in Hebrew, Prince of Peace. The Prince is not a very good translation. It's basically, it's not just a, have a minor uh, sense of like He's junior. He's junior to the king. Actually, the prince means the person that inherited everything, so that person now is in charge. Let me try that one more time. Prince of peace doesn't mean he's junior. He's junior to the king. Originally, the word means he's the one that the king entrusts everything to him. So he is now the one who is in charge. So the sense of inherit something, and now this person is in charge. So the direct translation should be the child is the official in charge of the all shalom. Turn to neighbor and say shalom. shalom, shalom, hallelujah. Right now, you know there are thousands of rockets showering Israel, and I've seen a protest from the United States just calling Israel, protest against Israel. I don't know where it's coming from. Who starts shooting the rocket first? I have no idea. I have to, I have to say this. This is, this is a covenant God make with Israel. He will honor, respect. He will, so don't touch God's. No, you say, well, it's not fair to the uh, Arab. But it, God has a different covenant with Gentiles like us. If, if God dropped that, then God is not a God of covenant. Amen? Covenant that we may miss a whole contract but god will never so let's be very careful about this all right and another translation the child is a well-being authority so now be honest today the pandemic the young people i've seen the data so it's right now it's happening right now we are doing coaching right now we have seen the data Prior pandemic to post pandemic is a huge difference. It's not just us. Other organizations come out and say the child's well-being is a top priority right now. It's it's more than just the pandemic itself. Because you know, I, I was coaching a couple, and the dad has a concern because he worked in the health um, industry. He has so much concern. He has two points of tranquility and two points of acceptance. For example, just. And, and, and he has a four-year-old son. And he decided to keep the son at, in home, at home instead of choosing to go to school full-time. You know why? Because the father thinks the school should provide something partial. Partially school, partially home. But the school couldn't afford it. That's in New York. So they can either choose full school in person or at home. The dad, out of his concern about the son's so-called physical wellness he chose and we coach the family the son play eight hours of video game watch youtube four year old eight hours on the iphone ipad video game in the video game he play minecraft if you name it all kind of game four years old in human history, we have never had a generation stop playing game that early, and we can do nothing about it. So I just appeal to the, 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 the parent and say, pandemic risk is this. Your son's brain is being wired eight hours a day for a year and a half into playing the video game to release dopamine to get excited. And I was interviewed with a little boy. He couldn't calm down at all. He needed constant, constant stimulation. We need God's positioning system. Part of that, we need God's peace. Not God's peace. Let me take that back. We need the Prince of Peace. Jesus to speak the peace, the real peace. What is the real peace in you and me? Is a peace I feel okay, I feel secure. Or is Jesus' peace that God sees the whole thing? 
because the pandemic may pass, may have a risk, but your son may permanently wired for life to take that stimulation. This child, Jesus, is the well-being authority. It, it, you know, folks and parents, if your, your, your son or your daughter live in your house, get them out. Just get, encourage them. Just say, hey, time, let's move on. Because our well-being is more important than the physical risk that you and I get taught from the media. Well-being. Jesus is in charge of well-being. And, and I, I, I don't want to repeat this, you know, church is not an activity or a club. Church is where we, as a group, as a family, try to, as I just implied, try to follow God's commandment through Jesus. Well-being. How is Jesus the Prince of Peace? He said in John 2, Peace I give it to you, leave to you, but my peace I give it to you. Not as the world gifts do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And we have to use, have Jesus' peace all the time, guard our heart. When we need God's guidance, we have to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, is this my peace or your peace? Oftentimes, I don't feel it's peaceful, but we still have to take that risk. You know why? Because when we step out of the comfort zone, it's actually more safe. It's safer there on the other side of the fence. Amen? It's not you don't do nothing, the safest thing. No, sometimes we have to take risk to get to the next step. That's safer. That's where God's leading you and me. So I'll give you a couple of things. How to discern God's peace through Jesus. All right, you can jot this down. If you are facing through something, I hope this couple of points will help you. Number one, start by defining what your heart is after. It's very clearly that when God wants to lead you, it's leading your heart, not your thought, not your reasoning, not your emotion. If you come to me and ask for advice, I have to get past those stages until your heart is speaking. What do you really want? We have to be very honest with God. That means what kind of peace you really want. It's the peace that your son stay home and play eight hours of video game, but you have a sense of you know, security. Is that a real peace you want? We have to really find that peace. What kind of peace you need? You want to have so much money in the bank so that you will never lack. You can ask God. That's where your heart is. Or you actually say, Lord, all my money is in your hand. Help me to invest, taking some risks so that I can mitigate the risks through the way with different pockets of investment. That, that's your decision, my decision. God will never, never push you to do that. But God will show us how, how where our heart is. Number two, separate lies from the truth. It's from Psalm 34, 14. And it's very, we have to really, really start to listen to everything and say, Lord, help me to discern. What are the lies? What are the lies? The lies is like, did his parents sing or did he sing? All those are lies. It's regardless of what. We have God's possibility system. We have God's what? The second is what? Possibility, the second is what? Power system. So now, we can really have time, spend time with God, say, I have God's possibility. I have God's power. I now can spend time to seek the peace Jesus is going to give it to me. It's not my peace. Jesus said, my peace, I give it to you. Oh, I pray that you and I will know what Jesus' peace is. Oh, if you start to know that through worship, if, if you, if, when, I don't, when we start Saturday worship, I'm here every time. I never miss it. You know why? No matter how busy I am, it's not because I'm a pastor, because I find Jesus' peace here. Amen? Last week, Henry came to me and said, throughout worship, he saw there's a big chain from my family on me called poverty. Poverty, about money. And being chipped away by the anointing. Right now, the chain is broken. Wow, it's so right on. And, and we need that. We need the supernatural peace from Jesus. That's why every time I have a chance to worship, every time I have a chance to study Bible, sit down with the man, and we just talk. Jesus' peace just coming when we fellowship. We have to grab that peace, not my peace. Surrender control to the one who control it all. It's from Philippians 4, 7. And, and, and the next one is the most difficult part of all this is once we know that peace, we have to surrender. And, um, you know, 
we, we have been renting house for more than 10 years since I became pastor. Um, <laughs> I want to share that with the whole congregation to glorify God. And a couple months ago, my landlord came to me and said, I want to build a house right next to your house. I said, excuse me, sir. Yes, I want to build another house right next to the house I rented to you. So um, <laughs> I said, excuse me, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm going to build a house right next to your house so I can rent to, to other people. So see, uh, we start to feel losing peace. I said, God, I love this place. I'm so settled. This is quiet. Uh, but, 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 you know, you know, see that? It's a God's peace system. So I just start to speak to Jesus. Jesus, what's going on? Okay. And, and <laughs> so start by defining what your heart is after. Yeah, of course, I want to have my own home. So I talked to Shaway. Yes, that has been our heart. Even though we can only afford renting, you know, but for God's kingdom, we rent a pretty expensive house. You know why? Because by God's word, we have to step out of the, the basement, uh, basement uh, anointing. Um, <laughs> No, seriously. So we step out, we rent it. Part of that actually because I think I want to, at that time, why and why, we didn't have a space. So I have to open my house. So the first two years, it ran from my house. We feed them every Friday. They came. It for the kingdom. This is what my heart is. And separate lines from the truth. You know, I can go into the who sins. Oh, my landlord is such a hard man. Man, how can he divide the land and rent it? He's such a greedy man. No, I don't go there. That's a lie. It do doesn't matter to me. Okay? I have God's possibility system. Amen? So, shall we and I start to think God's power? So, we say, well, we pray and say, by faith, we step out and go find a house. But, folks, you know the housing market this year? Anybody been there? Oh, ho, 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 ho. It, it, it's it's crazy. It's a buy, It's a seller's market. We went out, and we have a. We actually, you know, it's you know. So I saw somebody we work with, very good realtor. I shall we roughly give me her name. You know me, my low order. I end up calling the wrong realtor. So we start with the wrong realtor. I supposed to call somebody, and I called the other one lady. So she came out, and she didn't know what happened. She pretends she worked with us. <laughs> We have a realtor come out, and this, the, this realtor is pushy. Be honest, she's very pushy. And, and you know, do I lose power? Like, oh, I'm high acceptance. This realtor is pushy. I didn't hire you. I fire you. I go back to the realtor we think is nice and work with. No, we just say, Lord, I'm blind. <laughs> so, so we work with pushy realtor. She got the job done. One Sunday, we went out. We made the offer. And my realtor pushed me to, to return next day. Xiao and I were like, ah, we don't know, you know. We want to negotiate. And the realtor said, do it. <laughs> I thank her right now. You know why? Because the market right now is even more crazier. Their house, after they sold in June, where we got the house right now, the housing price after a month, merely a month, 10% increase. That means my house right now also have a 5 10% increase. I don't care. It's going to be my house. Hallelujah. So one weekend, we didn't bother just, you know, calculating, recalculating, positioning, la, 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 la. And we have one thing, my heart, our heart, shall we? It's hard. We have to close to Mulan is. Otherwise, we have a lot of other choice. We can go out of town, right? But we want to close to where Shaway's mom is. That makes a very, very challenging condition, guys. And we got a new house. And Shaway's condition has to be relatively new. You know the Princeton house? You walk into the million dollar house, but it was built in 1930. I, I don't know. If you like the, this old house thing, God bless you. I don't, okay? <laughs> this old house need fix, okay? Need fix. And, and I hate the smell. And, 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 and the window never is a window. I don't know how people, so, so you know. In 1930, people are tougher. That one I know. Because the way they put the window in, there's no insulation. I was frozen to death. You know? We had to put up more than curtain, everything. It just turned up the heat. But people in 3019, no problem. <laughs> so just let you know. Hallelujah. God's peace 
is in us. Sometimes the peace doesn't come because these people talk so nice to me. It doesn't matter how people talk nice or not, amen? If we have God's peace through Jesus, we can work with anyone. That God's purpose is going to be accomplished in your my life. You are too sensitive. Let's get out of that sensitivity zone. Amen? I love people. So I really thank this realtor. Now we become good friends. She even invited her daughter to see our new house. And she was pushy. Thank God she was pushy. Amen? I was as an Asian, we were recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. Let's see another 10 house before I make decision. She said, get it. Otherwise, you get nothing. I say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and we got it done. You know, hallelujah. Praise God. You know, sometimes we just have to trust the Lord, not, not trust our blindness. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. Your pastor now is only in the home. Out of this crazy market. It's in Princeton. If you guys can visit us, we are taking it down. We are designing a new kitchen. I love the designing part of it. Um, where is the place? It's right next to, you know, the, 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 the whole, whole earth place, the organic food. My mother-in-law's favorite. You see, God's so good. God, God, God's so good. God's possibility. She now come to my house. She can walk to the whole earth and buy whatever she wants. Vegetable, organic potato, you know, all, you know. <laughs> So we don't have to shop every week right now. If you need vegetables, shall we say, go get something. We just go out and walk there and get the vegetable back. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's a cutty sack. So no, no through traffic. Oh, but if you want me to really think through the Asian mind or set, oh, we have to pay the, the community you know, you know, fee and all that. No. By God's grace, it is good. It is good. It's Jesus' peace. Amen. Jesus, peace. And, and shall we have something, a, a, a nightmare is sh she would find out that the, the water pipe is made out of uh, lead. Anybody know the lead pipe sometimes cause uh, uh, the mine something. So shall we is like worry. And then now we take the house down. We see the whole house is copper pipe. When I see there, look at the copper pipe. I say, God. You are the God of possibility. <laughs> you are the God of power. You are the God of peace. Shall we say, just for this alone, it's worth it. Amen? I'm going to wrap up soon. Hallelujah. The final one, discover His glory through creation. That's very important. If you really need to follow God right now, I recommend you go through the natural, take a walk. And find God's peace. Sometimes don't, don't listen. Don't call people. Don't go to your best friend. Take a walk. Go see God's creation. Take a break. Hike. Just simple thing. A lake. Just go through it. You know, God speaks to you through the natural. It, I, I do that all the time. Just go out alone or with your best friend. Or, you know, Xiaowei and I, we do this all the time. When we make major decisions, we take a long hike. And, you know, God's going to speak to you. Next thing, worship. Come in with music and all that. And meditation. And, and through your heart, through the words. All those things can help you to discern God's peace in you. You have five, six bullets. You can work on any one of them to find Jesus' voice to lead you. Oh, we need that. I cherish that voice. And that's a voice I, I hold dear to my heart. That's why I want to come to church. I want to really have fellowship with all of us here because through all this community, Jesus is our peace, our prince of peace. He's the one in charge of our well-being. If you recently feel angry, more